welcome back to season five of We Talk Talent, the show where we unlock the secrets of future workforce within the industry's brightest HR minds. Today, we are thrilled to have Aarti Marwa Upadhyay, CHRO at Devyani International Limited, joining us for a deep dive into the ever-evolving talent landscape. Aarti, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Samya. Uh, I feel equally blessed to be a part of it. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. It is such an honor to have you here. And for my viewers, uh, before we jump into the discussion and the discourse part, I would take a moment to introduce Aarti. Um, she's a seasoned HR veteran with over 20 years of experience, currently leading the talent charge at Devyani International. Her expertise spans in retail and quick service restaurants with a proven track record in strategic talent management and spearheading the organizational change. But wait, there's still more. She's a passionate advocate for empowering individuals to become positive disruptors. Think talent with a change maker mindset. Outside of work, she's a culinary enthusiast who loves to travel and believes in bringing joy to both her career and personal life. So let's give Aarti a big warm welcome once again. Thank you so much, Samya. Thanks so much. Yeah. Great, Swati. I have this opportunity to be in this amazing conversation with you and I will definitely try and make the most out of this time. And let me let me just start, let me just get the ball rolling with the first question. Um, and you're going to agree on this, that the past few years, if I could say, uh, maybe three to four years have been a whirlwind for the work. Um, I would love to understand from you, Aarti, that how is your industry tackling the changes that the workplace has gone through in this period and would be great if you can, you know, give us an overview around it. Sure. So uh, I think if I have to talk about as for the QSR insights by the Aeon and if you look at more as the macro factors, you know, they define the world outlook. So be it the supply chain constraints, they've been lot around uh, higher long-term interest rates, they've been ge uh, geopolitical instability and what in turn it has led to as an impact is huge uh, impact on the labor shortages to say they have been uh, rising food cost as well and the consumer patterns you know the consumption has had an impact there so to tackle the change I think uh, importantly what the industry is now looking at is how do they diversify into new brands how do technology help drive the process you know and uh, move to new countries new continents introduce new brands you just have to stay comp uh, competitive and edge on the business so yeah Thank you so much for that, Aarti. But um, those are some critical uh, points that you've raised right in front of us. Uh, this also kind of directs me to the second part of this conversation. And you've already talked about uh, the labor shortages. So speaking of staying ahead, if I would say, um, all the leaders, all the fraternity would agree to this, that the talent war is a real thing and it's here for us. So from your vantage point and considering the unique demands of your industry, uh, what particular skill gaps do you perceive uh, that are fueling this talent war, Aarti? Yeah, so I think it's again a lack of skilled workforce, like I said. There's a higher attrition, you know, in the industry changes. And I think a lot to contribute around the way the jobs are being currently transformed to digitalization. So personally, if I have to re uh, respond to this one, I think uh, there's been there needs to be a lot of focus around continuous learning. And I think, uh, you know, learning just not helps retention in an org. It, it also helps in terms of an org development, to say. So managers, the way ne they need to now embrace a situation is, you know, they have to make attractiveness, how to create attractiveness of a job is not to let through only, uh, you know, giving them a very uh, good hike or a size of the salary, but it's to do a lot with the soft factors and maybe to call out few appreciation, rewards and recognition, purpose autonomy you know giving them a work which is very constructive and an approach towards if they fail you know how do they bounce back so uh, all these factors you know really help in terms of supporting and how do you you know link and create that and give that ecosystem um yeah yeah absolutely i mean that's critical and i i love how you've spotlighted on creating uh, the moments that matter the most as they say um, so everything that runs in and around will be like a game changer here. Um, I think you do represent a very different side of the industry. I mean, we do interact with a lot of leaders on this, uh, you know, season. Um, so that kind of really prompts me to the second part of it, which is the gig economy. 
uh, of course, a lot of data suggests that the gig economy is booming right now. But also it highlights that many organizations are struggling to kind of integrate it seamlessly. So what are some of those, you know, the hurdles, the biggest hurdles, if I could say, that you see for Indian companies looking to leverage uh, the gig workforce effectively? If you could just highlight a couple of them for the viewers. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think, like you rightly said, there are many challenges with the gig economy, but that is how the industry you know, outperforms and is very critical. This is very critical to success, especially in the QSR space. Uh, what we perceive is the gig workforce often face, you know, job insecurity, the lack of benefits to say. Uh, there is a social security and an income uh, volatility for them. However, they are able to figure out through their own uh, aspects, you know, in terms of how do they make that benefits than regular employees and make their financial stability uncertain. So if I have to put a long story short, the main issue with gig economy is the employment relationship, you know, and how do we navigate that and make them more fruitful, more effective, communicate harder. Ultimately, it's it, money is what takes them home. So, you know, giving them that ecosystem is how we need to deal it and, uh, you know, create that work post going. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's that's pretty much a power anecdote that has come from you, Aarti. So thank you for that. And of course, we're talking about a lot of trends and how can we not talk about the world of automation? And if I could just say and set a bit of context to everyone that the world of work is becoming increasingly automated with each passing minute. Um, so Aarti, in your view, how will uh, the importance of soft skills evolve in the face of this automation shift, if I could ask? Yeah, sure. So again, you know, we've all experienced the way the COVID-19 pandemic has transformed the way we work and uh, which has required business to navigate through remote work, digital technology and increasing diversity, etc. I think uh, the post-pandemic requires, again, a workplace which is not just restricted to maybe, say, technical skills, but a lot more focus around, like you said, the soft skills. And this includes, again, a sharper focus around communication. You know, how do we ensure that there is proper collaboration and teamwork? How do we see that there is a lot of adaptability and flexibility in terms of how we conduct, how we perform? Uh, with that said, a lot more paid attention towards emotional intelligence, you know. Uh, it has to connect with a lot of empathy to say. There has to be a leadership, you know, in terms of guiding them, not just with the current work, but how do, you know, the leaders help span the T-shaped talent uh, and help them give them broader scope and autom autonomy to operate. So, these skills plays a very critical role. And I think those who understand are able to nudge and again, create an ecosystem which is more healthy and a place to enjoy. So there has to be a joy of learning too. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's a beautiful point. And I, I really like And If I could just sum it up for the viewers, it would be that if you talk about the automation, I think autonomy definitely stands out. <laughs> so that's, that's one important part. And that also kind of uh, shifts the gear of this conversation, Aarti, to... The DEI part, we are talking about the talent war. So how can we not talk about the diversity, equity and inclusion, which is definitely a very critical element uh, when we talk about the talent success. Um, so my question to you is that can you share some insights um, into Devyani International's approach to creating a truly inclusive work environment? Oh, yeah, I think uh, I feel very proud in saying, you know, when you talk about DEI, it's a it's a corner store for us in DIL. We live, we breathe, and we just don't say it for the sake of it. You know, again, immense pride to talk about from a number perspective where today our workforce is hovering around one third, which is 30% as women diverse workforce, you know. And I think it has had it uh, its own journey. Again, to just start and give some context around, you know, we started a Pizza Hut store uh, back in 1995 in uh, East. And I think after that launch and the way we did, it was just history. And it is not just to do with business performance. It was more purely around how the customer experience were dealt with. And it, this was a, a full women operated store. And I think then this was just about history, you know. Uh, post this, we came up with four more states, replicated the model. And I think we've just seen success, uh, not just so and so that, you know, we also have uh, inclusive workforce. So people with disability and again, very proud to share that you know, we have KFC stores where we have this workforce. And again, the I think the the hard work, the the joy which this, you know, this uh, task or workforce performs, it's just uh, uh, it's just mind blowing. 
So I think uh, this is just a passion. It's very close to us. And it is a wonderful opportunity to share our joy and foster a sense of inclusivity, creating memorable moments for all who are involved in this process. So, yeah. Absolutely. I think we started on, we started our interaction, uh, you know, Aarti, with the moments that matter the most. Um, and you've actually ended on those mesmerizing moments that have been uh, mattered the most to your workforce. Thank you so much. Uh, you've really given us a lot of insights into one of those uh, industries in the models that we were not aware of or that we don't get to hear so often. And uh, kudos to you and the team at Devyani for doing such amazing work. So thank you once again. Uh, thanks, Somya. Thanks to you. Uh, thank you for having me here and sharing the insights. I hope I'm able to make a difference and uh, look forward to more interactions with you. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. And for my viewers, thank you. Uh, it's a big thank you to Aarti once again from my side and the viewers. Uh, Thank you for sharing those expertise and those candid views. And for my audience, uh, keep growing, keep learning. And don't forget to tune into the next episode of We Talk Talent. Until next time, have a fantastic day. And I'm going to see you all very soon. Thank you.